Okay, YouTubers, uh, so we're about to begin on a little bit of an adventure here with the building of our peat and pole air camper. Uh, we decided that we were going to need to build our wing first, and so that's what we're going to do. Uh, as you can see here, we ordered a set of plans from uh, Andrew Peat and Pole, and uh, these come complete with everything that you need, including a full-size uh, wing rib layout. And... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, how we got started building our uh, rib jig and our fixturing there a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, bending wood and the forms that we use to dry uh, our cap strips on and uh, give you a few heads up on things like that. This is our first uh, uh, go at uh, building a, uh, an air camper, so we are not experts by any means. I know there are a myriad of ways that uh, guys use to, to do the things that we're doing. Uh, we got uh, a lot of our information from uh, our tech counselors in our Chapter 468 EAA and uh, from doing a lot of reading and research and what other peat and pole builders are doing. So we recognize that uh, there are a wide variety of methods that we can use uh, for doing these. And uh, so we're just simply showing you what we did. And uh, perhaps you'd be kind enough to give us some, uh, some of your thoughts, uh, some feedback on, on what we're doing here. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, I want to talk a little bit first about the uh, wood that we're using. We're using uh, spruce, uh, aircraft grade spruce that we purchased from aircraft spruce uh, over in Peachtree City, Georgia. Those good folks have supplied us with some very good wood. The uh, quality of the wood was good. The uh, consistency of the uh, dimensions were very good. They're very uh, tight tolerances on their machining work there for the most part. I've been very happy with that. So uh, these are the cap strips that we're using and these uh, by necessity have to be uh, bent in order to conform to the shape of the wing rib. And uh, the way we did that, elected to do that, was simply got a two inch piece of uh, PVC tubing. Uh, we glued one end and then just left the cap on the other end. So what we do is uh, we can do enough cap strip for probably uh, four ribs at a time. That's about our capacity. So we just stuff this guy full and we go upstairs to the oven in the teapot. We boil a couple of pots of uh, water. It's, we get it good and hot boiling and uh, fill up the tube to an appropriate level and uh, for our purposes, bending purposes, we only need about this much water because that's the, uh, the, the area of the cap strip that needs to be bent. So we fill that up with boiling water simply put the cap on it and we set it aside for 24 hours and that has been working out really well. So we'll pull the cap strips off then we come over to our forms and we'll uh, go ahead and put our cap strips on the form, clamp them down and let them dry for maybe three days is about what it's been taking, two or three days and uh, when we pull these off they retain their shape fairly well. If you pull them off much sooner than that uh, then they're not going to retain their shape and they will spring back. So uh, there are uh, a lot of ways that you can make forms to do this bending. We simply took uh, three pieces of uh, one by, as you, can, you may or may not be able to see here, three pieces of one by, laid our uh, wing rib uh, profile out on it, drew it out, and uh, cut it to shape. And we actually made the curvatures a little bit more severe than they would need to be to account for any spring back that uh, you might have. Then we took uh, some uh, one inch uh, spade bit and drilled holes in appropriate locations and then we uh, used these bar clamps to uh, clamp it down. Uh, one note is that uh, you don't want to clamp these too tightly because the wet wood will indent. It will take uh, on the shape of these uh, little uh, clamping blocks here. So you don't want to put too much pressure, just enough to uh, conform it to the form itself. So we'll let these guys sit for about three days and uh, get completely dry and then we'll bring them over to our uh, rib jig. And I have here uh, what most would call a little bit of a crude rib jig. Uh, what we did here was we got a piece of uh, melamine uh, shelving board and uh, we chose the melamine because it's pretty slick and it does not, uh, uh, the T88 epoxy uh, doesn't stick to it too bad. It will, it will come off pretty easily uh, if it gets on here. So 
you want to make sure that your, your uh, melamine board is flat and on a flat surface, uh, otherwise your, your wing rib uh, will be distorted. So it's very important that it's flat. Now what we did was we simply took our uh, uh, plan for our wing rib, laid some carbon paper underneath it, taped it down, and very carefully traced uh, the lines that are on the form here, on the plan. And uh, in order to make sure that we were accurate in what we did, the plans have the actual measurements, the numbers uh, that uh, allow you to confirm that uh, you're building the wing rib uh, to specifications. So we simply compared those numbers to what we had done, found that we were uh, well within tolerances, and uh, so we proceeded from there. Now what we use for our uh, blocks to hold the uh, cap strips in place were just some half inch wide uh, uh, cap strip spruce material that I had laying around uh, for building instruments and uh, what we did was we put the outside fingers on first and we ran them just right up to the line if you look uh, pull this one out. You can see the lines here from, left over from where we drew it. So we just simply put these blocks right up to the line and nailed them down. We didn't glue them or anything. We just uh, used our, our pin nailer, our pneumatic pin nailer, nailed them down. Uh, we did that all the way around and then we came back on the inside and placed the uh, cap strip, uh, the pre-bent cap strip down and butted these uh, blocks up against it and pushed it pretty hard up against these uh, fingers here and then nailed them down. And uh, what happened as a result is that we have a pretty good tight fit. It's not so tight you can't get the uh, cap strips in and out, but it's tight enough to hold it in the exact location that we want it and not allow it to move. Uh, so we did that all the way around and then we came back and uh, placed our uh, locating pieces here for our internal bracing and uh, we simply went ahead and cut the internal bracing pieces to the correct dimensions, laid them in there and then we did the same thing again with our uh, little blocks here. We just placed on one side right up against the, uh, the internal uh, piece and nailed that side down. Then we came on the other side, pushed push the other side up against there and nail that down. And so now uh, all we have to do is to go back and cut our pieces. So uh, the way we cut our internal bracing is to, uh, you can see that, uh, you can see in the box here that we have already pre-cut uh, in these bundles all of the internal pieces for all of the ribs that we're going to be building. So we just did that ahead of time to save a little time while we were at the saw, just got it all done. So then we come and we lay out our uh, internal pieces, just like you see right here. And the way we cut those, you see we have a, uh, a internal uh, bracing uh, guides here. We simply lay that out uh, inside. In fact, so I come from this side. Got it lined up uh, with our guide blocks. And then we just come, take a fine line pencil, make our mark. And we come over to the little cutting block. I've got a little kind of a craft saw here that you can find at most uh, Home Depots and uh, craft places. It's a fi very fine tooth saw that will cut on the push and the pull. So it uh, actually works very well. And uh, I have enough practice that I can pretty well cut 90 degrees every time. So then we'll get close here. Always leave your pencil line, as every good carpenter knows. So we see that we have a little bit to go. So what I do then is to make a pencil mark that approximates the amount of material that I need to remove. And, and if by chance I have uh, a good bit of material to remove, I'll come back to the saw. If not, then what I do is I just come over to my belt sander, fire it up, and we'll uh, remove uh, a little bit of wood at a time until we get uh, an appropriate uh, fit. So let's do that.
try that. Okay. We got lucky. All right, so we don't want to have to jam it in. We don't want to have to hammer it in. We want this to fit snugly, but without any huge gaps. So what I do is I take, and I press that down in there, and uh, I'll make sure that uh, beforehand that there's no debris under here, no excess glue or dried glue, no sawdust or chips, so that this is going to fit flush, and if I need to, I can just give it a little tap there and see if it's flush. And uh, what I like to do is to just, I've rigged up a little sanding block with some sticky sanding paper. I'll just come back, touch this up a little bit, and uh, make sure that that's completely flush. Because uh, in the next video, what we're going to be doing is placing our gusset uh, plates over this and we want a flush fit and this one's still not quite there but pretty close so I'll just make sure both ends are flush okay and we will proceed like that all the way down the rib until we reach the end and at that point we will be ready to uh, mix up some T88 and glue our internal bracing and then we will uh, at the same time go ahead and apply the first uh, side of gusset plates. So that will be in our next video. So until then, happy building.